Hi, good evening. It's Friday night. It's 80 degrees. This is Guadalajara in the state of Jalisco in Mexico. My name is Jake and I'm the host of your new wine show, Vino Mexico. We are here today and we'll be hopefully for the next however long you guys decide to start keep watching this thing. Um, every Friday night looking at a single bottle of wine produced down here in Mexico. That's everywhere from the Baja California all the way over to Nuevo León, all the way down to Aguascalientes and wherever else is producing this, this great stuff. There's, there's loads of this stuff down here. As you can see, we've got a good selection lined up here ready to go. Every week we're going to pick one bottle, we're going to drink it, we're going to see how good it is, we're going to see how yummy it is, we're going to see if I can handle it on a Friday night after a hard day at work. That's the most important thing. Am I a sommelier? No, I am not. Am I a wine expert? I drink a lot of wine. Does that make me an expert? <laughs> Basically, I like wine to drink it. I like wine because it makes me happy. I like wine because sometimes it makes me look cool. What do you think? Basically, I'm like you guys. I buy this stuff because I want to drink it and I want to have a good time. So I want to know if I'm buying a good bottle of wine, <clears throat> is it going to be any good? Now, <clears throat> The wine world around all of everywhere at the moment is just full of this stuff. So why should you care about wine from Mexico? Well, wine from down here in Mexico has been, been made for over almost 500 years. It's home to the, the oldest winery in all of the Americas. It's the producer of some really excellent, excellent, excellent wines. Easily on par, if not better, he said controversially, to anything made up there in California, north or the states, Washington, or Oregon, or even France, he said, even more controversially, but we shall see. The whole point of this is for me to look at each of these wines and help you get an idea of what we have down here. So next time you want to try something different and you think, hey, why not try something from Mexico? You've got a reasonably good idea about what we're going to do. So that's what we're here. Every Friday night, new bottle of wine. <clears throat> we're gonna open it, we're gonna drink it, we're gonna see if it's any good. That's the idea. So, week one, you cannot talk about Mexican wine without paying homage to <laughs> the Abuelo. Oh my lord, it's the first one. Production quality is absolutely awful. I'm filming this on a broken iPad. I don't care. If this gets going, I'm sure it will get better. But at the moment, I'm in my office. I got a bottle of wine. It is Friday night. I really feel like a drink. The Abuelo, the Grandfather, Casa Madero, you have to start somewhere and that's, yeah, you, you, with Mexican wine you cannot start anywhere else. Casa Madero in Paras Valley, in the northwestern part of Mexico, is the oldest winery in all of the Americas, from the south to the north. The Spanish came here, they put Casa Madero. This thing has a charter from the King of Spain to produce wine to the Spanish church. At least that is what the chief sommelier of Casa Madero told me. <clears throat> this bottle here is a 2012, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a Cabernet Sauvignon Casa Grande, Gran Reserva. It is a pretty fine bottle of wine. This costs about 400 pesos, which in normal money is at the moment about $20. So, not a bad place to start, and just for a Friday night, if you don't want to spend anything too expensive, then this is a good place to start. So, we have the tools, a wine glass, a bottle of wine, a broken iPad, and a bottle opener, and my trusty book. This book by Madeleine Pouquet, awesome sommelier and wine geek co-founder of Wine Folly, really, really good for helping you look at all the bits and pieces. Now, why do I have this with me? If we're just gonna look at the wine and we're just gonna drink it. <clears throat> it's to try and get an idea of the wine and see if it's any good, um, see what the flavors are involved, and then try and give it a little bit of structure to the wine tasting in order to uh, give those who are interested a little bit of information. And then we're gonna drink it, because it's Friday. Okay, so this is the Cabernet Sauvignon. According to Miss Bouquet, this thing has medium high fruit, strong body, medium high tannins, medium acidity, medium high alcohol. That's what I'm talking about. 
Okay, flavours. We're talking cherry, black currant, bell peppers, baking spices, and cedar. Cedar? I, does anyone really know what cedar tastes like? Who's actually gone up to a cedar tree and took a bite out of it? Honestly, I haven't. I don't think I ever will. <clears throat> okay, primary flavours. We're talking red fruits. We're talking black fruits, black currants, cranberries, black plums, prunes, figs. The minerals, whipped gravel, graphite. Now, I did see a video where she was sucking on a piece of chalk. <laughs> I don't know, maybe she just has like gone out and eaten some clay dust and she's got it in here and, and then drank some Cabernet Sauvignon and went, you know what, yeah, clay dust, Cabernet Sauvignon. Ah, we'll see, you know, we will see if we get any of that in here. So, this thing made up in the Paris Valley, which is up in the northwest, uh, just near Monterrey, in the, uh, the Sierra Mountains. <clears throat> this place up at 5,000 feet altitude, it is a cooler um, climate than it is down on the Gulf Coast. Now, up there, having been up in Monterrey, you get some serious, seriously high and hot days up there, some really, really hot sunny days. Um, I'm guessing then if, according to the information we have here, that it is slightly cooler than down at the uh, the coast, but still you're going to be talking a lot of sunshine. So warm climates, yeah, you're going to be somewhere in the black cherry and the blackberry sort of place. <clears throat> yeah, this this stuff is is growing everywhere. I mean, Cabernet Sauvignon is Cabernet Sauvignon. It's everywhere from France, it's Spain, it's Australia, it's South Africa, it's South America, it's North America, it's 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 everywhere. Except for some reason, this book doesn't list anything about Mexico. Okay, let's get into it. So the whole point, we are going to be looking at the colour, the smell, we're going to be smell, swirling it, we're going to be smelling it again, we're going to be tasting it, we're going to be looking at the primary flavours, the secondary flavours, and then we're going to do the test as to whether I can do a Friday night slug without throwing my guts up, and then we'll leave it from there. So here is my trusty bottle opener, you know all about these, they're, they're bottle openers. It's just a straightforward bottle opener. It's like $2 from Walmart, something like that. Nothing too posh. We just shove it in. But at least I do know not to go all the way down to the bottom screw, <coughs> like some people who are supposed to be experts. We pull the thing out. Okay. First thing, of course, you know, <coughs> look at the cork. Why do you look at the cork? You don't look at the cork just to make sure it's not broken. If you want more information on this, actually look from somebody who's a wine expert and they can explain it a lot better. For me, I just want to know, especially living down here in Mexico, is someone trying to give me fake wine? Okay, cork says Casa Madero. That's a good start. It hasn't got any wine lines up to the top. It's not broken. It's got a nice little red hint and it's not bleeding. Okay, so we're just going to get straight into this. I'm going to move you down a little bit so you can see this. <clears throat> one wine glass, one bottle of wine. We're just going to pour that in there. Oh, by the way, because I'm just a normal guy, I don't spit. <laughs> okay, smells like wine. Let's try, <laughs> Let's just try and pull this back. Okay, it's very, very light. This thing has been stored at 55 degrees in the uh, the wine cooler, which is my uh, my little thermal thingy over there. And so it's still not very floral, but it's still very smooth and it, it, it doesn't smack you in the face like a brick being thrown at 100 miles an hour, which is sometimes a good thing. But it's very relaxed and you can definitely tell the stuff in there. It does smell very red fruity. It does smell a little bit like strawberries, to be honest with you. Oh, let's just spin this around so keep looking. Okay, so here we go. Okay, the, the first flavour that you get out of that, yeah, it is a little bit like black currants. It is a little bit sharp. Um, the tannins in there do grip onto the back of your teeth, onto the back of your lips, and it is a little bit astringent. Um, that apparently is a <sighs> yeah, is a feature of the Casa Madero wine. Um, it's definitely drinkable. It's very, very nice for a Gran Reserva. Um, it's a little bit tart. Um, I would expect this to be smoother, especially for a five-year-old wine. 
um, but it's not bad, it's certainly drinkable, and for a Friday night, that's what we need. So let's try that again. First load of sauce. Yeah, red currants, a little bit of black currants in there. Yeah, there's a bitterness in there. There is definitely a bitterness in there. Um, yeah, that gives it a complexity. It's certainly got a complexity in there, um, and it's it's refreshing. The alcohol is is, is definitely there. Um, for a 13.9, which is basically a 14% wine, that's pretty strong. And yes, it will it will keep you going. Um, okay, I mean, in, in terms of the the tannins, they're good. They are there. The smell, the the as well the the taste. The second ones, it's it's a good solid wine. Um, what more do you want me to say about this? I mean, in terms of Cabernet Seven, I'm not going to sit here and start telling you it's this type. It smells like used cars um, in the middle of the summer with a wet dog in the back that's had a basket of peaches sat in the, the boot for three days. No, I'm not going to say that. The whole point of this, as I said, is that can we drink it? Is it good? What's good? So, Friday night, after work, you get your bottle of wine, you come home, you throw it into a glass, and we will do this with every single wine. <clears throat> can you take a double slug, and what's the reaction that you get after it? Is it a moment or do you want to slam your head against the wall and throw up? Let's try it. Three, two, one. <sighs> ah, it's an ah wine. So yes, it hits something. It keeps things going and we get the nice little glow coming. So, Casa Madero. What can I say to it? The official people <clears throat> Don't really know about this wine, to be honest. Wine Spectator doesn't even feature it. Um, <clears throat> old information on Cellar Tracker, give it an 89, which means basically nothing. Vivino, which is a, or Vivino, I guess, which is a, uh, a smartphone app, which is used quite a lot down here in Mexico, gave it four stars. Um, people seem to like it. I mean, yeah, why not? It's, it's not too bad. Cellar Tracker has it but it is not rated. That is going to be a major feature of this program. A lot of the wines that we have here don't feature on, on any of the information boards or any of the databases or any of the computer apps. They're just not there. The people don't know about these wines, which is why we now exist, to bring these wines to you so you know about them. Casa Madero, Gran Reserva, Casa Grande, Cabernet Sauvignon, 2012. It is a Friday night double swig. And that's what you want at the end of the week. Okay, my name is Jake. This has been Vino Mexico. Next week, Friday, we are going to be looking at Monticianic. Again, this is another Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a 2013. This one is from, I don't know, the Baja California, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's the Baja California, Valle de Guadalupe. This is what we're going to be trying next week, going through the same test. So... For the rest of the night, it's time to put this bad boy to bed. This is Jake, this is Vino Mexico, wishing you a great night. Salud, buenas noches, hasta la mañana.